All right. Hello, everyone. Hope you're doing all right. Welcome back to this new video. We are going to be touching on rejection blocks. So we've had breaker blocks, mitigation blocks and order blocks. That's a lot of blocks. Now, like I said as well, you don't need to know every concept to become profitable. So just pick out a few concepts that you like and then stick to them. Because this is the only way you can actually reach mastery. If we truly want that intuition, that gut feeling to take over, and we are constantly hopping from this concept to that concept to this concept to that concept, then we are not submitting to time and we are not allowing that intuition and the mastery to eventually take over. And that's very important for you to understand. And this might be a little rant, but if you're not listening to these rants and you're just here for the concept, then that won't help you because trading is not about concepts. The concepts are your guidelines. They are your toolbox. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to psychology. And sticking to one thing is all about psychology. It's not about concepts. All right, without further ado, let's talk about rejection blocks right here. Rejection blocks are fairly simple. A rejection block, and the way I like to see them, is when we do have a long wick at the top or at the bottom, for example, this right here, we have a long wick, then we might not sweep above, but we might not take out this whole wick before we continue lower. Why is this? Well, we know generally, and especially when we're trading CFDs, then every broker will have a little bit of a different price action. But generally, on these brokers, the bodies will be the same because that's where the most volume of the trading is going to happen. And the wicks, the wicks are purely for manipulation. So the wicks are to take you out. They are there to manipulate price. And the bodies tell the story. So the liquidity is actually above the bodies, not necessarily the wicks. So right here, if we take a look at this example, we take the highest candle. So this is the highest candle, whether that's the close or the open, this is the highest candle. That is your rejection block. Now, the reason I like it the most is because we have this long wick. That's when I do like a rejection block the most, when there's a long wick. So you can see price here swept above this body and then drop lower, it's taking out, or it's even tricking in new people, and then it's doing the exact opposite. So breakout traders got long here, and people, their stop losses got taken out before the real move happens. Now, as you might notice, rejection blocks are mainly on the outside. So they are either all the way at the top, or either way all the way at the bottom not necessarily in between price not in the middle somewhere so this right here when we trade above the body but not above the wick and most of the time we trade inside this long wick and then we drop off all right so this is a bearish rejection block again you take the highest candle now if we take a look at a bullish rejection block i can already see one right here right here the lowest candle that's a rejection block as well it sweeps the bodies, but not the wick. Again, it's a long wick. That's when I like to use rejection blocks, when it's a long wick. And as well as you may notice, the main trend right here was bearish, right? We were going down, obviously, hindsight 2020 vision, but the main trend was going down. Generally, when we are moving against the trend, so this is also the opposite trend move right here, a counter trend move then we will not always sweep below the low. We will generally respect rejection blocks more. Again, test it for yourself and see if you like it. And then maybe you can look to implement. So right here, same thing, right? Rejection block right here, the lowest candle, we sweep below the body, but not below the wick. And then we continue higher. Again, a pretty long wick as well. And same thing, like we just mentioned, it's going against the trend. So it will not always take out this low of the wick. It might just respect the rejection block right here. And as well, it's an outsider candle. It's sort of at the bottom instead of somewhere like here in the middle, for example. Same as here, somewhere at the bottom. It made a swing low, which we'll get into later on. And then we respect the rejection block and continue higher. All right, last example right here. Another bearish example. Same exact thing, right? The highest candle, in this case, the down close candle is a little bit higher. So the open of the down close candle is a little bit higher than the close of that up candle. 
again long wick it's on the outside it sweeps the bodies and then continues lower so that's mainly all there is to it don't overcomplicate it this is literally all you need to know about rejection blocks so go ahead and study them for yourselves and i'll see you in the next one all right thank you Thank you.